Hey friends, Dylan Bates here with the Final Cut Bro. Today we are gonna be covering five audio hacks to up your sound game. So the first audio hack I would like to cover is time reversal. I'm gonna play this clip and it won't have the element that we'll be adding. Just a basic gun sound. Today we'll be covering how to add a reverse sound effect to really enhance your videos. So let's go ahead and open up this. And we're gonna be taking this gun rifle shot. And if I solo that with Alt S, we can hear what it sounds like. It's a really meaty sound that I really like. But we are going to just come on up here to the retime menu and we're gonna go to reverse clip. So that'll reverse our sound effect and we might shorten it just a little bit to make it fit in here. And let's find the moment that this gun comes into focus and we'll just set our audio to start or to end there. We'll fade it in and if we play it back, it's really got a nice sound. So now if we play it through, it builds a lot of tension and really adds to the impact of the gunshot. Moving on to number two. Occasionally I'll want music to cut out at a certain moment, but sometimes it doesn't work very well and I need to extend out the music. This can be difficult sometimes if you're not composing your own soundtrack, but I do have a method that allows you to extend out music. So I'm going to play this without extending the audio. That might work for some, but I think we could really add to this moment of comedy if we cut out the music. So I've made a few markers using M here and I found the exact moment that the music really builds. So I'm going to push B and go ahead and blade that. I'm gonna push Option W or you can go up to Edit down to Insert Generator Gap and that'll create this gap clip here. After we've created the gap, we're gonna slide this clip on over to where the face impact happens and the music's really hitting hard. And then select this gap clip, push Option and Command and click on your video clip. And that will make it so this video clip is actually attached to this gap rather than this uh, music element. And we can just shorten the music here. And let's go ahead and play through that. And that might be perfect for what you want to do, but I'm gonna be showing you how you can add reverb to fill out this moment of silence and make your music extend a little further. So let's go ahead and select both the gap clip and the audio clip. And it's important that you have this gap. Then we are going to push option G and that will create a compound clip or you can right click on it and do new compound clip. And we'll just call this music reverb. So we now have this, uh, this compound clip. You can see that it actually has the gap within here. Now, if you forget to add a gap clip, you can actually click into the compound clip and we could delete this out. And then you could just come to the end and again, do option G or go up to edit insert generator gap. So we'll make sure that we have plenty of length here on the end of our clip. Select your audio element, go to your effects, and I'm going to be using a reverb element called Cathedral, but you can use any reverb that you would like. This one is just really easy and I really like how it sounds, especially for this particular clip. So we'll just add that onto our music element. And if we play through, you'll notice that it has reverb throughout the whole song and we don't really want that. So we are going to select our audio clip. We'll come up here to our inspector. We'll scroll on down, find our Cathedral element. We'll drag the reverb amount down to one, which is the lowest it'll go. Come over here, add a keyframe, and then go up to where the music ends and drag that reverb out. And you'll notice that it's extended out our music element. And now if I play through, it 
it's really nicely extended out our music track. All right, moving on to number three. Number three may not be quite as exciting to you, but I think it's a really great way to really broaden your audio library without having to buy more sound effects. I'll notice a lot of people have whoosh sounds and stuff for their transitions or whatever. And if somebody plays the same whoosh sound twice in a row like this, I notice immediately and it really jars me out of the video. So what I like to do is if I don't have really a lot of options for a whoosh sound, sometimes I will push command R and I will retime it. We'll drag it out. And now if I play it through, gives it a little bit different of a sound, but also we can go to the retiming menu here and go down to preserve pitch and deactivate that. Now when we play it, it's a much lower sound effect. Additionally, you can also speed this up. So let's say we do 200% and it's much higher. And that's just a way to really broaden out the amount of sound effects you have without having to purchase anything extra. All right, moving on to number four. So number four is audio panning. And this is really handy for adding a lot of depth to your audio soundtrack. Um, and it'll just be passing the audio from the left channel to the right channel. And you can actually animate that. Okay, so if I play this right now, you'll notice that the audio is actually coming equally through both sides, even though the car is passing from left to right. And that might work for what you want, but you can add a little bit extra dimension to your sound by animating the pan. So go ahead and select your audio, come up to your inspector, make sure you have the audio tab selected, go to your pan mode here, select your mode and go down to stereo left, right. Now, if you select that, you can actually animate the amount left to right. So if I drag this way to the left, now you'll really notice this with headphones. It's only on the left channel. So let's go ahead and we'll start it out a little bit on the left and just kind of match it up with where it is in the scene. We'll add a keyframe. And then as it approaches and comes to the right side, right here, it's totally on the right side. So we'll drag this out over to the right. Now, I wouldn't recommend you go completely as in real life, you would still have a little bit of audio coming in through your left ear, even though um, your right ear is getting the bulk of the sound. So now this is animated. And if I play it through, and I might even Make that a little bit more intense. Let's go ahead. Perfect. Now it's coming through from left to right and it's adding a lot of dimension to the audio. We can just play this out. Okay, so we're back to where we actually reversed the audio element. If we want, we can really make this gun sound effect sound a lot meatier. In my opinion, it's missing a little bit in the low. low. Now you could find a gun sound effect that has that, or you can do this quick trick to add a little depth to your audio. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. We'll push option, we'll click and drag. And I've got my film right gun sound effect here. We'll come over to our audio effects here and we'll just search up muffled. Now I use muffled all the time. I feel like it just adds a lot to your videos. Here it is without the muffled sound effect. And here it is with. And we could even increase that a bit. Another quick trick for this, um, let's say that you wanted like a really nice, low, you know, ominous sound effect. Well, let's go up to ocean or something like this. So it's a nice ocean sound. Let's drag this on here. Let's add our muffled sound effect. We drag this muffled way up. it totally changes how this sound is coming through. And if you have like a subwoofer or something, you'll really notice the low ends coming out. And it can just totally dynamically change how a sound effect sounds. So that was five audio hacks to up your sound game. If it was helpful to you in any way, 
please consider pressing the like button. It does help me out tremendously. Also consider subscribing as I have brand new tutorials just like this one every single week. With that being said, I will see you next week.